All right, so now that we're done with Nightbane, we're gonna continue on our way. And next you'll see we have the Curator. So we gotta walk a little bit to get to him. Um, before we continue up this ramp to go through the rest of the raid, we're gonna take a look over here in this little alcove. Now you'll see this takes us to the guest chambers. And if you'll remember, we had this locked door that I told you to remember that opens when you walk up to it. So this is just a little shortcut back to the guest chambers once you get to this part in the um, raid. So everything kind of connects here. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully the layout doesn't, you know, like some of these connections, the first time I saw them, I was, I blew my mind. I was like, oh, we're back here. How? Like, how does this even work? But um, we're just going to continue on up. Here we go on to the next section, lower broken stair. So this is a tiny section. A lot of these next sections are just little, uh, you know, they're basically transit. Um, they're not anything, they're not any like rooms themselves. They're kind of just getting from one place to another. It's with the lower broken stair. And we're going to go up this staircase here, um, as the name implies. And then we end up, guess what? Upper broken stair. It's crazy. Um, so we come up this little side here and then we go around and around and up again. And now where are we? We are in the menagerie. So now we've moved on from Master's Terrace through the two broken stairs to the Menagerie. So the Menagerie is where we're going to find the next boss, the Curator, who I actually need an item from. I need one pair of these gloves to get the PvP version um, off of a vendor. So uh, what we're going to do here is, um, you know, you just walk down this hallway. And I can't be sure about this. I haven't been able to find any information on this, but... I seem to get more loot from this boss once I kill all of these things. Um, so maybe just to be safe, you should uh, do that as well. Um, be careful with AoE because he patrols all the way down this hallway. Um, I don't know. This could be complete um, misinformation here. And I'm sorry if it is. But, you know, hopefully this gives me some good luck and I get this item I need. Um, I, I tend to get more items off of him if I... Okay, yeah, no, I definitely don't get more items off of him. Um, yeah, so just ignore that completely. Um, I might even cut that audio out on that part. Um, yeah, okay, we're going to continue on. Uh, so we keep going down through here. And we are going to jump down here. You can go down the legit way down that ramp over there if you wanted to, but it's not really any reason to. These guys saw me in stealth. Um, so we are here in the menagerie. Pulling all this trash. I don't want to be. Um, ooh, a new uh, new staff. BC uh, World Drop. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Um, so there we are. We're going to continue on up another ramp here. And where are we? We're halfway through. Halfway through. So this place is, like I said, it's massive. Um, curator did not drop what I needed him to. Um, we only have a couple more bosses. Uh, here we go. Continuing on. Still in the menagerie here. Up another ramp. And we're going to get to the next section, which is the Guardian's Library. Now, this is pretty much us just going up this massive ruin thing. Um, so the Guardian's Library is a pretty straightforward one. Although, you might, um, you might be wondering. Okay, so here's Shade of Iran. If we look at our boss list, we have... Um, Ilhoof right here next, but Shade of Aran is right there, which he seems to be next. That's because actually the location of Ilhoof is to the left over here in this disconcerting bookshelf. And you right click this and you go through here and now we are in the repository, uh, which as you see is the next section and it's just a little hallway down to the boss himself. He's a little secret boss. Not really super secret, but I definitely didn't notice his, uh, definitely didn't notice this little layer here the, um, first time I went through here. So, looks like we got the pet that drops off of him, which I don't need, so I'm gonna delete. And, uh, we're gonna continue on back up here. Next up is Shade of Iran. You have to click on the bookshelf again to get back out. Um, Shade of Iran, we're just gonna go up here. And go over to this door. Open his door. Knock, knock, and go murder him real quick. Um, 
Wow, look at that. We're two of the same trinket. Amazing. Um, made it through the door before it closed. Amazing. So we only have three bosses left, as you see. Nether Spite, Chess Event, and Prince Malkazar. So, we're continuing on. We just got out of the uh, Guardian's Library, and we are continuing along to the Upper Library. This is pretty much just a transition section. Um, nothing too special here. Again, you want to be killing all this trash. This should all give you rep until you hit Exalted, which shouldn't take you very long. Um, yeah, just keep that in mind. You know, all these guys will drop you your zone drops if you're looking for those. Um, it's very nice once you don't have to kill trash in here anymore. You can just, you know, this place is really long and it's nice to be able to ignore some parts of it. So we're going to go up this ramp on the left first. And this is going to take us to this next section, the Celestial Watch, which is where we find Nether Spite. Now, Nether Spite is an interesting boss. I actually just finished... Um, everything I needed with these eggs that he drops. Now he can drop, um, I think it's one to three eggs. Um, every time you kill him, he's guaranteed to drop some. Um, and you wanna save these because you need to turn them in to level up your nether wing reputation, which again is a BC reputation. Where is it? Nether wing. I actually just got this to exalted today. Um, and that is located, you have to do a bunch of quests in Outland over in Shadow Moon Valley, you have to do a bunch of quests down here, and you eventually unlock the Netherwing reputation, and you turn those eggs in to get reputation with the faction. So you don't want to save those; they look like you know shitty little green items. You might think, "Oh, I could just get rid of them," um, but you definitely want to save those. So we're gonna jump down here. This is going to take us, you know, just a tiny little shortcut. We went up that way to the ramp, and we just skipped past this as we're jumping back down, and we are. Continuing on, we got the Celestial Watch. So the Gamesman's Hall is what's up next for us. And you'll see the door to the Gamesman's Hall is right there. It's actually a vendor right here. This guy sells um, something required for a secret. Um, it's for the um, Waste of Time secret, actually. If you ever end up doing that, this guy is a vendor that happens to sell an item for that. Um, I can delete these because I'm now done with the Netherwing reputation. Um, much needed vendor there just you know to clear out your bags um, and we're going to continue on through to the gamesman's hall now this is the worst part by far of this instance um, we're in the gamesman's hall as you see and this is the chess event this is the worst thing um, in this instance i hate it so much it takes forever it's really annoying and this is probably the main reason for making this guide is because of how annoying this is and how confusing it is to figure it out on your first couple times. Now, as you can see, I actually need an item from here. Um, this is the biggest roadblock for me in Karazhan right now is I have to come all the way through here and do this chess event every time. Um, whereas if I, you know, got this belt, I would just have to go to the curator. And then once I get the curator, I would just have to kill the first boss, which would be wonderful. Um, but, you know, I've done this a, many times and still don't have this stupid belt. And it's unique, so, you know, you have to get it from here. It's pretty annoying. So I guess we'll see if this is the time. So how you do this chess event, this is generally my strategy. You have to walk up to the king to start, or chief black hand, and you control him. Now what I like to do, and I would follow this um, pretty much directly, this should work every time. You use your one ability to move, and you can go ahead and click on the guy in front of you, and you actually move past him. Your three ability is attack, and you cleave a bunch of stuff in front of you. Your fourth ability uh, empowers everybody around you, and your second ability turns your direction, um, which we're not going to do. I'll do it on a different uh, piece. So what you do is you could click this X button, but it doesn't actually work. Um, so what I like to do is uh, right-click this um this uh, buff off of me control piece you're now controlling a chess piece so you right click that and it teleports you back here now you're going to have a debuff for like eight ten seconds something like that you cannot take control of another game piece so you wait until that is gone and then you can talk to one of these other pieces and you can go ahead and move it up so we're going to control this grunt and we're going to move him forward and you can just as soon as you move him you can immediately get out so you're getting your debuff um timer going and so we are just gonna keep an eye on uh black hand's health he should get automatically healed by the queen um or not the queen but i guess the bishop's heal um so 
yeah, that is, uh, there's no, like, chess moves, you know, pieces can kind of move in whatever direction they want. Um, but our goal here is to kill King Wayne, and generally to do that, we have to take out these two clerics, otherwise they will just heal him a bunch um, over and over again. And you can see we're taking quite a bit of damage here. And uh, this is generally because I am not doing this as fast as I normally would. So we might actually fail this right here. Um, nope, there we go. We got a heal. Um, so generally you won't get uh, War Chief Black Hand that low. Um, go ahead and move another Grunt up. You'll be doing this faster, but I'm doing it a little bit slower just to try and explain it. Echo of Medivh cheats. He does that. Um, and he just does a bunch of damage sometimes. Or he empowers his own guys sometimes. Um... So keep that in mind. We're going to move another grunt up. Kind of, you just want to get a little formation of, you know, one forward, one back of the grunts. So you can actually move the other pieces out. Some of these other pieces become very helpful, like these um, summon demons. So we're going to take him. This guy, you know, we can move him over here. And then we're going to want to move him again. But these guys have a area of effectability on three, and it kind of just does, you know, a big AOE. So you want to move these guys kind of far up into the fight. So um, hopefully this guy will die. Yeah, you can click on the pieces to see their health. We're going to move him forward, make sure he's in the fight here. And he's facing the wrong way here, so we're going to actually use the second ability. I'll show you how that one works, and we're going to turn him the correct direction. Hopefully War Chief Blackhand doesn't die. Um, like I said, you're usually doing this a lot faster. It kind of becomes muscle memory once you've done it a couple times. You just need to move these pieces into positions where they're actually going to be helpful to your king. And um, then eventually you'll just take control of the king. See, we can't control this grunt yet because our debuff. There we go. You're moving these pieces to positions where they're going to be helpful to the king. And you're just going to let them kind of auto attack all these mobs down. So like right now we have this cleric here. And he is um, slowly dying, so this is good. This is uh, this is really good, actually. We're gonna move this other demon over here. We probably don't really need to do this. I could probably just take control of the king right now, um, but we're gonna go ahead and move him over just to be safe. Um, so King Lane, as you see, all these all these enemy mobs have kind of just died on their own. Um, we haven't really had to do a whole lot except move pieces at this point. Um, so there we go. We're going to keep the demon there. And now we are going... Oh, he cheats. So you see he's empowered. Um, but it doesn't matter because we killed him anyways. So there you go. Generally what you're going to want to do after you're done moving your pieces around to good positions, I generally just move those two demons up and move the grunts so that you can get them up there. And then I just take control of the king and just start using his attack ability over and over again on stuff in front of me. And you just cleave all of it down. Um, but yeah, it's generally pretty easy. But it's definitely a frustrating thing to try and do if you don't know exactly what to do to get an easy win. It's trying to start this thing over. And, uh, you know, having to do it a bunch of different times is really annoying. Um, so, you know, hopefully this is helpful for that. Uh, now you have to go back over here and open the chest. And hopefully it's this fucking belt. Oh my god. Oh god. Okay. Guess I'm doing this again next week. So, um, that's the chess event. And then you just walk up this little staircase here. And we are still in the Gamesman's Hall. We're going to look over here. This is another little connection thing we're going to make. There's this spiral staircase right here. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're actually going to go this other way. Generally, you can just go up the spiral staircase. That's the fastest way. But I'm going to show you the whole instance. That is why um, I'm going this way. So now we are in Medivh's Chambers right after the Gamesman's Hall. These bunch of circle rooms here, and you just continue on through here. Again, you generally do not want to go this way. I'm just showing you the whole instance. There's this big old chair and this big old bed, and uh, we're going over here, and here we are at a spiral staircase. Wow, would you look at that? So, um, Medivh's chambers actually just is a completely unneeded floor. We're down here at the Gamesman's Hall. You just go up this staircase. And you're right where the chambers would have taken you if you went that other way. So you're going to want to just go up the staircase again. And now here we are at the power station. Another completely useless floor. Um, there's this guy in here, I guess. Um, but yeah, here we are. Power station. Wow. Beautiful. What a view. Um, so yeah, power station completely unnecessary as well. So we're just going to go back over here and go up these stairs again. 
And now we are in nether space, the final area of Karazhan. So, got another flesh beast fellow right there. Just going to kill him just for good measure. And we're going to continue on through here to where the final boss is. Just kind of romping around up here in nether space. Prince Malkazar. And we're just going to run up to him and kill him. And there it is. That is the end of Karazhan. Okay, so here we are. We are in the Master's Terrace at this uh, secondary entrance here. And the last thing I wanted to mention is how the um, set for this raid actually works. Now, this was a new thing added in Burning Crusade. So this will not have been a, um, a factor in collecting, you know, these Molten Core, Blackwing Lair, Temple of AQ sets that we got before. Um, but... Moving on forward, this is going to be kind of a common theme throughout all of the Burning Crusade instances. Now, if we look, there's not really a set for Karazhan. That's because it is in conjunction with another set, which is Gruul's Lair. So your pieces that um, drop from Karazhan are going to be part of this, um, this set here, the Gruul's Lair set. Um, now, as you'll see, there's also a PvP set, which is just a recolor. Um, now, this is also a thing that's going to be common throughout these instances. There's a PvP version of the set because PvP was added in Burning Crusade. And this is where we're going to get into how to get these pieces. So, instead of these pieces dropping directly off of these bosses, they're going to drop you a token. Now, as you'll see, I need one of these tokens, the Gloves of the Fallen Defender. Now, these tokens are for different classes. As you see, the... Um, Druid ones are also for warriors and priests, so they work for different classes, but sadly they are banned on pickup, so you cannot transfer them over to your other characters. Now how this works is you will get this item, and you'll see it says use create a class set item appropriate for your loot specialization. Now, your loot specialization should be whatever spec you are playing, so if I right click on my portrait I can actually change my loot specialization. I can have it as my um, current specialization, which is Feral, or I can switch it manually to any of the other Druid specs. Now, why this is important is because these gloves give you, you'll see it, if we click on this and do the drop down, there's six different gloves here. Now, three of these share an appearance, and three of the other ones share an appearance. So, it's a little bit different for Druid because um, Feral and Guardian were not separate specs back then. Um, so they're kind of just a conjoined one, as you see here, Feral and Guardian. Um, and then we have Balance and Restoration. So these are all the same appearance as you'll see. Gloves of Malorn, um, Gauntlets of Malorn, and Handguards of Malorn are all the same. I just tried to wear all three of them and they all look exactly the same. The only difference is their name. So depending on which loot specialization you are set to, it will give you that name. So, if you are collecting unique appearances and you have sources turned on under all the things, that means that it counts different named versions of the same item as different items. So, even though these gloves look the same, they're called something different, so you are collecting both of them. That's what uh, Unique Appearances does. And so if you have that turned on, what you need to know is you actually have to switch your loot specialization manually before using the item to get these other named versions. Now, most people probably don't care about um, the Unique Appearances. Um, I don't really, but, you know, if I get an extra pair of these uh, these glove tokens, I mean, I might as well use them on a named version I don't have, just in case I ever turn unique appearances on. Um, so that is how you do that. I didn't realize that for a long time. I cannot tell you how many um, set piece tokens I wasted just thinking it was a random one out of these that it gives you. And I was like, man, I'm just getting the same one over and over again. Um, no, you actually have to change your loot specialization in order to get these different named versions. Now let me turn sources back off. Um, and as you'll see, these three, the Gladiators versions, are different because they're a different color. These are the PvP versions. Now, what you have to do for these is you have to go to a specific vendor. And I will show you where that vendor is. Um, the easiest place to um, turn these in. There's a couple different vendors that you could turn them into. 
as you see there on the uh, sources list. But um, the best place to go for all of your Burning Crusade raids, so this is all of the Burning Crusade raids, you're able to turn your set pieces in for the PvP version at the same place from different vendors in the same room. So we're going to go there and I'm going to show you how to get there. As you'll see, these three are the same appearance. So as soon as I get one um, set piece token here, which is what I needed off of the curator, I will go to those vendors, turn it in, and get these three items checked off my list, as well as get this glove slot on this um, set completed. Now, if you... You don't have to worry about the specializations on these. If you are collecting all of the named versions, as you see, they're barely different. Gladiators, dragon hide gloves, gladiators, Kodo hide gloves, gladiators, worm hide gloves. Um, they're barely different. So if you are collecting all three of these as unique appearances, um, you don't need to switch specializations or anything. You just buy them off the vendor. Now, we're going to stop talking about the vendor and actually go there. So we're going to go back to Orgrimmar and I will meet you there. Okay, here we are in the Orgrimmar portal room. So this is where we're going to want to go. This is Burning Crusade content that we are trying to um, complete here. So we're actually going to go down these stairs over here in the portal room and go to the portal to Shatrath. Now, again, I have a guide on all the fast travel locations. Um, it's a little bit out of date at this point, um, but it's still pretty comprehensive on where all these portals in this portal room take you and the different places you can fast travel to. So check that out if you want to know more. Um, so we're going to go through this portal to Shatrath City, and um, this is going. This is the hub of the Burning Crusade content. As you see, we're on Outland here, which is you know where all the Burning Crusade stuff normally um, is located. Um, all these other raids are going to be located, for the most part, um, within Outland. Um, Karazhan's kind of an outlier in the sense that it is not located on the actual continent. So once we're in here, we're going to be looking for another portal. Now, this portal is to the Isle of Keldanas, and you'll see it right there. Um, there's a portal back to Orgamar there and a portal to Stormwind there. So you kind of just look around until you see the singular portal, and the Isle of Keldanas portal is what we're looking for here. So we're going to use it, and this takes us to, um, you guessed it, the Isle of Keldanas. Now, where is the Isle of Keldanas? It is up here on the very top of the Eastern Kingdoms. This is a separate little area, and it's actually the location of one of the Burning Crusade raids that we will go over eventually, the Sunwell Plateau. But this place is important because it houses all of the vendors that you're going to turn your um, tier tokens into to get the PvP versions of your items. So, we're going to go to this little house right over here, and we're going to climb up this ramp. So as you see, we are on the map right here at this little house. Um, it teleports you to the house directly across from it. That's where the teleport takes you. Um, so you just walk up this little ramp and you walk up another little ramp. These uh, blood elf houses are really cool looking. Um, really, uh, you know, really unique design on these. So um, here we are. These are all of our PVP vendors. So we're going to take a look at all of these. As you'll see, um, I guess we're sell. Yeah, let's just sell real quick to this vendor. Um, delete that. As you can see, we have a few different items here. They have PvP items from Burning Crusade just for sale, um, and then they also have PvP items from Burning Crusade that. So you can just collect those, you know, just by buying them, um, by the way. That should be pretty obvious. But then if you scroll to the next page here, we have the PvP items that require these specific items. You'll see Boots of the Forgotten Vanquisher. These are from Sunwell Plateau, actually. Sunwell Plateau. Sunwell Plateau. Um, these are, looks like all Sunwell Plateau PvP items. So you, if you get your tokens from the Sunwell Plateau raid, you turn them into here. Um, we just need to find the correct vendor here. This is from the Eye Serpent Shrine Cavern, the Serpent Shrine Cavern, the Eye, the Eye Serpent Shrine Cavern. Looks like this is the Eye and Serpent Shrine Cavern. Um, this guy is not selling anything. Over here we have Battle of Mount Hyjal. Battle of Mount Hyjal. Um, Black Temple. 
Battle of Mount Hydra with Black Tumbles located here. Is it really going to be the last vendor that we check? I guess so. Here we are. Yes, this is the correct, um, correct set here. So we're looking at Karazhan, the Curator. That's where those drop from. As you'll see, I do not have these collected. These are the one thing I'm missing from this vendor because I need another token. As you see, all it requires to buy these is the token. Um, the unused token. So make sure you are careful with your tokens. You don't just use them all up um, because you definitely need to save some for the PvP vendors. Um, it's not something that is super intuitive. It's not something that, you know, you'd be like, oh, I know where I need to go with this um, to get this uh, version of the item. Um, so this is definitely something I wanted to include in the guide. Um, so this is where you will turn in all your Karazhan and um, Gruul's Lair um, tokens. Now, if you don't know any of those instances that I just mentioned, there should be guides on them coming up soon. Um, we just started with Karazhan. As you'll see, Gruul's Lair, Magtheridon's Lair, Serpent Shrine Cavern, The Eye, Battle for Mount Hyjal, Black Temple, and Sunwell Plateau. Those are all the Burning Crusade raids. And I will be making a guide on each of those, um, hopefully pretty soon. So um, hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, this was the guide on Karazhan. And I hope that, um, you know, you have good luck on your drops. Hopefully you don't get stuck doing the chess event for 17 million times like I am. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. That's it. See ya.